Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you a 3D transition on Cinema 4D. If you're not already familiar with the program, then I highly recommend you to watch my Beginners to Cinema 4D video. I talk about keyframes, lighting, camera, adding pictures, adding shapes. So if you don't already know how to do all of that, then you should definitely watch the video because if I already explained it in depth in the last video, I won't be explaining it in depth in this video. So anyways, to get started, first we're going to create the centerpiece of our transition, which is the cutout of whatever person you're doing. So what you want to do is go to Options, Configure, then go to View, and change the projection to Front, then go to Back, and click these three little dots, and you're going to select whatever picture you want to have in the middle. The picture should pop up just like this and now you can go up here to the spline pen tool and you can just create a mask as you regularly would on after effects so i'm just going to zoom in here and just click on where i want my mask to start and then just hold it to create a curve it's the exact same thing as how you would create a mask on after effects when you get to the edge of your pictures like this, you don't want to drag the mask to below the pictures thinking, oh, well, the picture ends up here, so it's not even going to get this bottom part of the mask. It's different in Cinema 4D. This picture is just a guide, so you don't want your mask to come out of the picture like this. You want to keep it within the picture. So once you're back to where you started, just close up the mask by bringing the dot until it creates that little circle indicator thing. Now click up here to the top left, just click the arrow, that way we don't accidentally make any more masks. Now we can go back to Options, Configure, go to the Back tab and uncheck the Show Picture, then go to View and change this back to Perspective. Now click this little cube outline thing, it should say it's the Extrude object, and drag the spline under the Extrude until the arrow points downwards. Now you can click the Extrude. And you want to change this last value to change how thick or how thin you want. So obviously if you want it a little thinner, then maybe go for maybe 5 centimeters. And yes, you can see it's pretty thin like that. Or you can make it a little thicker and go up to like 50 centimeters. It is your choice. If you want to make it a little less sharp like this, then go to Caps and increase the bevel size. And as you can see, it's getting a little curvier. If you want, you can decrease these segments to one and it'll have this kind of carved out look. Or you can increase these segments to about 10 and it'll look even more curved. Now to add our picture to this, you want to go to create down here and click new default material. Double click that and turn off reflectance unless you want a reflection on your thing. And here where it says texture, click the three dots. And of course you want to select whatever picture you used earlier. Now I'll close out of this. Now you want to drag the material to the extrusion. And if your picture doesn't show up, that's okay. It's still going to be there. It just won't be seen as you're editing. If you click the symbol up here, it'll show you how your edit is actually going to save. And as you can see, my picture's there. It's just a little stretched out, but we can fix that. So click up here to the material. And you're just going to have to play with the offset U and the length U. That changes it horizontally, while the offset V and length V changes it vertically. So if we preview my picture here, we can see it's a little horizontally stretched out. So I'm just going to turn down the length U and that should make it a little slimmer again. And now I need to move it to the center. So I'm going to turn down the offset U to move it more to the left. And now he's looking a little short. So I'm going to increase the length V. And to bring it up, I'm just going to decrease the offset V. It's a little more accurate. I'm just going to have to adjust these numbers a little bit more. So just keep adjusting your numbers until it's close to what it should be. Now that we've adjusted the picture, we can now add the things surrounding it. So there's three different options for this next step. You can add a cube, you can add a flat picture, or you can add a flat picture but a Polaroid version. Either way, we're just going to start out with a cube. So first I'm just going to hide the mask by clicking this little dot on the top and making it red. That way we can just focus on the cube right now. So of course, if you want to keep it as a cube, then just leave it as it is. But if you want a flat picture, then just change the size Z to 1. Now to add our picture onto this, you want to create a new material. So double click the material and turn off the reflectance. If you want to just use a plain picture, then go to color and click these three dots and just select whatever picture you want to use. Close the material editor and just drag it onto the object. And again, if the picture doesn't show up, don't worry, it'll still be there when your edit renders. If you want to use a picture that you made in After Effects with like overlays and all of that, then make sure that your resolution is at full. Then go to Composition, Save Frame As, and File. Then change the Output Module to JPEG Sequence. 
and you can click here of course to change the file name and where it's going to save and just render it or if you want to save it as a video so that your background keeps moving then just save it as you would regularly render any other edit you're also going to have to convert it to an mp4 file before importing it into cinema 4d Lastly, if you want your pictures to be like a little Polaroid thing, then you can go to the description. I will have a mega link to download this Polaroid PNG, or you can just go to Google and find your own using the words Polaroid PNG. And just import that into After Effects. And of course, scale it up. And you want to unlink the scale, that way you can increase the size horizontally like this. And from there, you can just use the same rendering methods that I showed you earlier of how to save it as a picture or how to save it as a video. So back to cinema, you want to create a new material and edit the material, check off reflectance, go to color and click these three dots and you can just insert your picture. Or if you saved it as a video, make sure to click the MP4 file, then just close out of this and drag the material. Again, it might not show up, but when you click the render view, it should be there. So now that we have one of our pictures, we can click this little cube with the dots, that is the cloner object, and we can drag the cube under the cloner. Then select the cloner and go to object, change the mode to radial, and now we can turn the mask back on so that we can see how far apart the objects need to be. So to spread them apart, just increase the radius. And of course, you can increase or decrease the count as much as you want. Now to make this a little less plain, you want to go up to the cloner and hold it down. Then click random, then select the randomizer and go to parameter. And here you can change how much you want each object to be kind of randomized. So for example, if I zero at the Y position, you can see that they're all on the same Y level now. Versus if I increase it, you can see that they're a lot more random now. You also want to check off the rotation, and I just input some random values into this. And now it looks like this. So now we can repeat the process of creating a cube. And this time I'm just going to keep it a cube so that you can see the different styles. And creating a new material, and just add the picture or video that you want to use. And drag the material onto the cube. Then create a cloner and add the cube to that cloner. Change the cloner to radial. Increase the radius to spread them apart. Really quick, I'm just going to select my cube and decrease the size. Back to my cloner and I'm just going to move it up. And now we can add the randomizer. And check off the rotation. If you're doing the same thing as me where you have both cubes and flat pictures, it would be best to make them a little more mixed and not have them in levels where like the flat pictures are on the bottom and the cubes are on the top. So to do that, just change the Y position of the randomizer to negative 1000 and just drag down the cloner and then we can probably move the randomizer to negative 800. And now if we move the cloner, it just looks a lot more mixed and a lot more natural rather than having one style on the top, one style on the bottom. You can repeat this process as many times as you want. I only did it three times and right now this is what my transition looks like. So now that we have all of our objects, we can add a background to this and we can start keyframing. So to create a really simple background, I'm just going to hold down the cube object and select the tube. And you want to drag this little square and that'll increase the radius of the tube and you want it to be super big. Then you want to drag this yellow square and that'll create a little hole. Then over here you want to drag up this yellow square on top and that'll increase the height. You want to go to the rotation segments and change that to 50. Then to cap this off you can just create a disk object. Then just increase the size of that and it's okay if it comes out of the circle a bit because the outer part won't even be seen. Then just duplicate the disc and move it to the bottom of the tube. Now I'm just going to create a new material. I'm just going to make my little room white but you can change it to whatever color you want. Then just drag this material to the two discs and to the tube. Now I'm going to add a light and just drag it back so that it actually lights up our center here. For the shadow, I'm going to use Shadow Map Soft. 
then go to shadow and change the shadow map to the biggest one and i'm just going to turn down the density to about 75. now we can add a camera so to move our camera around i'm just going to configure the panels so on this top right one you want to go to options configure and change the view to perspective and change the display to the gold rod shading then go to panel and change the arrangement to two views either stacked or side by side now you want to change our original view panel to the camera view now over here in the perspective panel we can move the camera around and then in this top panel we can see what the camera is seeing so first i'm just going to start by going to the coordinates and changing the rotations to zero and changing all of these values to zero now down here we can move our camera back and our camera is actually going to stay in place like this we're not going to make it rotate what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of the objects that we used for the center and right click and click group objects and that'll create a null layer so since we're done moving our camera i'm just going to go back to the original panel so before we start keyframing, first I'm going to change the amount of frames in my clip. I'm going to change it to 43, that's about 3 beats in a regular edit. If you don't know how to determine how long your clip should be, I talk about it in the beginner's video. You can make this however long you want, but I'm just going to stick to 3 beats. So now to keyframe our transition, you want to select the null and click R on your keyboard for the rotation tool. If you want, you can have it start out like this, just facing the center, or you can have it tilting a little bit and you want to select this key so that it creates a keyframe then you want to go one frame before your clip ends and rotate it to the opposite direction and click the key again to create a keyframe and now we have this of course as with any other transition you want to add graphs so go to the window and select timeline f curve then you want to click the plus to expand the null and click on rotation h now just select the first keyframe and just drag the little line downwards and select the second keyframe and drag it upwards you want to have this kind of shape now to add just a little bit more detail to our transition so it doesn't look super stiff like this i'm just going to expand the null and go to the first randomizer and go to the parameter and i'm just going to keyframe the y position at the beginning then go towards the end of my clip and just increase it a little bit and I'm just going to do the same thing for each of the other randomizers. That way, as the center is spinning, the objects are kind of floating away and it just doesn't look super stiff anymore. So once you're happy with how your transition looks, you can go to the render settings. Make sure that the width and the height are the same as your edit on After Effects. Change the frame range to all frames. Go to save and change the format to MP4 and type up the file name. And you can click these three dots to change where it'll save then you can close this and just click the little render with the picture if you don't have this in the middle then just hold it down and it should be there 